welcome on the lunch break. Thank you for coming to my lightning talk about ADR. So without further ado, let's just start. So a word about me, I'm Marek Dominiak. I'm running trainings in event storming architecture, domain driven design, TDD. I have 17 years of experience behind my belt. I'm co-owner and instructor on at Trainitech and hands-on architect and tech lead at Mintra. So where we are building e-learning platforms for big companies. Now, let's talk. I will later on at the end of the talk, you will see links for the slides and to contact me. And now let's talk about this. So are you satisfied with the current state of your documentation in your project? I guess I will hardly see any, any hands ever right, reason. So let's do something about this. But let's answer this question. Why should we even document our architecture? There are a few reasons. Obviously, you everyone will have some answers in their heads, but let's just try to go quickly through them. Because people come and go, but the code and architecture stays. So I bet none of you work with the people that essentially started the project years ago. Like, I'm pretty certain that this is completely different team. If they took some decisions with themselves and they weren't recorded, that's pretty kind of hard spot to be in. And then for effective documentation, we can onboard our new team members much faster. And, uh, and leading that point, we have as well curious developers can get faster. So I had this uh, few developers back in the day when we had pretty good documentation. I had only two hours for them on onboarding and I had to do some other things. After two days, they started to ask pretty damn good questions about architecture and our project. They started to be very effective in the first week. That was a pretty amazing. And the most important, if you are owner of this project or paid for it, would you like to have it documented? Would it be good for your sustainability of your business? For sure, we should be professional, we should be pretty, if we even are contractors and work for some clients, we should be professional and give that them, okay? Now, let's, let me tell you a story about S3. So I've got an innocent question from my CTO, like, Marek, could you tell me why in 2018, when moving our services to AWS, we stayed on Elastic File System for quite some time instead of moving immediately to S3 storage um, immediately? It was 10 times more expensive and I've got sweat. I got this question and I was like, first, oh, that was my decision. I don't remember why we took it. So then I started an archaeological process of gathering information from long email threads, you know, like those hundreds long mails, conference documentation, commits history across some projects, Jira tickets and comments, then from coworkers, and just only after six hours of being lost in time, in space, in the long email threads, I successfully recovered the context of the decision and found the, the answer. I was so glad. But wouldn't it be easier just to have this, decu this decision recorded? It would probably in 2019, when we, once we took the decision, it would take me half an hour to record it. Okay, that's why we like architectural decision records. So architectural decision record is a document that captures an important architectural decision made along with its context and consequences. As you can see, there are only two words marked in bold on the screen. Context and consequences. This is what I would like to point during this presentation to you. Now, the first mention of ADRs is from this blog post from Michael Nigart. I just just read it. It's very short. It's very useful. It's really cool. The, all the links will be at the end of the presentation, so you don't have to go. And this uh, this definition comes from the second link, which is essentially a very good library of information about ADLs, ADRs, and so on. Now, to understand ADRs, it's best to look at it. By the way, don't read it. I will just sum it up, summarize to you. But what's important? So we have an example of an ADR. We wanted to use a testing framework, Spock, and we chose Spock. There was some date. It was accepted. It's perfect. And in the context, we can read that mainly we develop in Java, 
people and developers are not happy about writing a ton of boilerplate code. And as well, we want like a library that's widely adopted so we have good support for it and it won't disappear like Angular will change you know, ver from version one to two everything and we won't be happy about this. And there was a decision that we chose Spock. And then there is a second part of ADR. We have some consequences, positive, negative, and then other possible solutions. This is kind of an ADR. It probably took half an hour to take it. We will look closely at this one later on. So the template of ADR look, can look like this. So we have a type, we have a date, we have a status. Decision can be proposed, then we can uh, do a code review and merge request review and just uh, talk with our coworkers and decide what should we do. And then we can maybe accept it. Then we have a context. We will talk about this decision. What, what was the choice and uh, the justification of it? Consequences. Stakeholders, obviously, other possible solutions. Maybe if you want, you can have as well in, uh, investigation part. If you took way long to, if you, it took you months to make, uh, take some decision, sometimes it's a lot, a lot of documentation. Just don't put it into ADR, put it as a appendix or somewhere else. So it can be this last part. And you can add your own section. It's not like static. You just adjust this to your team. Now, two very important things. What kind of decisions should be documented? Decisions that are not easily reversible. So choosing, obviously, cloud provider is not the very easy decision to change. Once you are in a bed with AWS, it's hard to switch, you know, all of that. So that's kind of uh, one of the examples. Decisions that are not obvious. So if there, there are decisions that are not obvious, obviously we needed to make some trade-offs between many different things. So there were many factors. We should document those. Decisions that can help us to answer the question why, like exactly with the story at the beginning of the talk. Because if I would have it, it would take me only five minutes to find the link and send it to my CTO instead of spending fun the whole day of recovering that. And decisions that can be used on onboarding will save you time in the future. And if you are like me and you can be bothered by some decisions, you wake up at four o'clock in the morning and think, oh, I know, finally I found the answer to something. So that was a hard decision. We, I should document it. What should be included in each ADR? That's more important. And this is the part where you should invest your time spending. This is lightning talk. We don't have all the time. So this is the part you would like to um, look, for, uh, look into after the talk. Architectural drivers are considerations that need to be made for the software system that are architecturally significant. It's blah, 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 blah. It's really hard to understand. However, in the book by Joves Ingeno, we have the groups of those. So we have functional requirements. You can read about those. We have design objectives. Maybe it's a prototype. Maybe we want a contract. Maybe it's a long-term project. Quality attributes, which should come with metrics. Maybe availability or security is more important than one in another. And constraints, maybe internal like the size of the team and knowledge in the team. And external, we would like to use OAuth for all our authentication across the whole company. And you can read it in those two books. So Software Architecture Handbook and as well Software Architecture for Developer by Simon Brown. This is the part that we should focus on. So let's take a closer look at our ADR. So what's important here? We have a design, design objective. We would like to use something that's widely adopted in the industry, so we won't lose time on supporting or fixing those. So this is an architectural driver, design objective, long-term sustainability. If you will look more closely, we will see that we have some project constraints. We have skill, the team skills and knowledge for Java. We mainly develop in Java, so we are kind of limited in space what we can do. Then we have as well, testability is a key concern for us and in our going development and efforts. 
So this is a quality attribute, increase the stability and maintainability. Look, I haven't chosen anything from the decision. Everyone knows that we chose Spock. Why we chose Spock? That's the real reason why ADR exists. If we will take a close a closer, uh, take a look at uh, another part of ADR. So what's important here? We have consequences, but we have both positive and negative. Do you believe you have ever a decision that only has positive consequences? If so, please think it over and talk with your coworkers, you will find few. There is always some negatives. For example, in this case, we will just pay with Initial productivity deep, maybe 30%, because someone has to learn a new tool and maybe run, uh, write some code in Groovy. All right. So from this, you should remember, context is king. And the journey is more important than the destination. So how we ended up with the decision is more important than the decision itself, OK? Because that's what pay the bills in the long time. Now, how to store ADRs? So obviously, ADRs is not only one decision we work with. We have a list of those. So we have something called architectural decision log. So it's just a list of ADRs done in time, so sorted by time. The whole team has access to it. It shouldn't be hush-hush thing for only architect architects. Everyone should have access to it. It should be pretty transparent. Then it can be stored. For example, what works for us is Confluence, because everyone has access to Confluence, and we had like 30 or 50 repositories, so it was pretty obvious for us and pretty damn small um, usable thing to use Confluence. So we have one big main page for all decision logs, and then one specific page for one ADR, and then we have some pages for very specific ADRs. So we have those sections like general rules, where we have, for example, code review, uh, information how we should co conduct this, and so on. We have system architecture, DevOps team has its own decision lock, and their, their services one, two, and so on have their own. Then what about the template? The template we can use based on what Confluence gives us. They have something called decision page back in the day, or decision documentation, or you can create your own template. Or you can store them in Git as MD files. So you can, uh, if you use this tool, you can use MD files and just store them in the Git repository. However, and if you use Structurizer, what you can do, you can visualize those two, uh, those decisions. So if you use Structurizer, it's easy to use those two tools at the same time. But keep in mind, if you have if you don't have monorepo, most probably you should create one repository for all your decisions across many projects because it will be hard to give access and have overview across all of it. Now, ultimately, it's your choice. Discuss with, the, with your team. Let's take a look at the titles. That first title is really good. The title is important because it should reveal the decision made. So logback is used as logging framework. It's much better than log for j versus logback versus something, and that's the tight. What was decision about? We need to go inside the document and read it. Waste of time. So the, this should be revealed in the tight. But some tights can be changed. So if the decision is proposed, we can change the decision and, for example, put AWS over here once we accept the talk, once we accept the decision. Okay? And by the way, not all decisions should be technical. Do you think choosing documentation language is important? It is. Is it strictly technical? No, it's not. So ADRs can be used for many different thing, decisions. There are some takeaways. Clarity is the key. So ensure all drivers, architectural drivers, and the necessary context is included in ADR. That's the important thing. By the way, ADR should be <laughs> like aim for one point, one, uh, maybe two pages. One page, two page. No one likes to read the 20 long pages on Confluence documentation. Who loves them? No one. Yeah, like I thought so. So managing length. Rather than adding more information to one ADR, consider splitting an ADR. 
So we can put an investigation part as at the end of the document or move this investigation to a separate document and add it as a appendix. So the ADR should be clear, okay? And maybe you wanted to put too many decisions in one ADR. You should split it. And takeaways two, very important. Add a periodical task in your calendar to review ADRs and if we need to update some decisions or add a new one, I bet in the past month, maybe three last weeks, you took some this, you made some decisions and forgotten to record it. That's why we should have some a reminder for ourselves. Then, this is awesome. Obviously, use AI. There is no talk, not mentioning an AI. Here we can use it as well. Writing documentation is no fun, but we can use our own prompts with our own templates, just giving it necessary context and architectural drivers in our context. And then we can really quickly write those ADRs, drafts. And by the way, don't be afraid of adding new fields like issue link or if your team finds it's useful, okay? So reminder why we should use ADRs in the team. They help us to make better decisions because they are peer reviewed and transparent. They are a great tool for effective collaboration. They are very simple to start with and save a lot of time in the future and very, can be very quick to write if you use AI and it yields a very good return of investment and just start using them. So there are some references, but there will be a link to the slides on the next page. So here you can contact me on LinkedIn and there is a link to the slides, so links and QR codes. Thank you so much.